In this video, we're going to explore how to use ChemDoodle at OWL, which is online web-based learning, which is a learning resource of the Cengage Publishing Company. What I have done is I've opened up Chapter 22, Question 13 to get this window over here. If you're in Orgo 1, you can use Chapter 6, Question 13. I wanted a sketcher window with a ability to add more products if needed. This has nothing to do with uh, question 13 or uh, uh, in either chapter. Uh, I've invented this question. Uh, we're supposed to draw the structural formula for the major product of this reaction. Here's the alkene that we have to focus on. Show product stereochemistry if the reactant alkene has both carbons of the double bond within a ring. This example, there's no ring, so we don't show stereochemistry. And if the reaction produces a racemic mixture, I'm just supposed to draw one isomer. Okay, now, chem doodle. Uh, my personal preference is to draw all the bonds and do atom labels later. So, in this molecule, off of the left carbon of the alkene, there will be the more electronegative O, and off the right carbon, there will be the less electronegative Cl, following Markovnikov's rule. So I'm going to have bonds off of those carbons to carbons, and then I will edit the labels. Here is what I mean. I need a 5-carbon chain. I start here. I always start on the dot. 2, 3, 4, 5. Off of the second last carbon, I need an OH. I will edit this methyl to an OH. And off of the last carbon, I need a Cl. I'll edit that to a Cl. Here is the O. Chem doodle fills in octets, unless you give it more information about charge. And the CL is also here. And it just added it to my methyl because I clearly drew a bond. I'm going to undo, or I could have used the eraser. And I'm just going to click on the carbon and get a chlorine. So there is what I want for this problem. Uh, if this was the real problem here, I would hit submit answer and hopefully get a check mark. Our next version will have the ring, so stay tuned. Similar question, but both carbons uh, in the double bond are in a ring, so we're going to have to show stereochemistry. And uh, once again, only one product. In this one, I'm going to start right away with the cyclopentyl ring and off of the I'm going to do all my bonds again I'm going to need that and this there's the ethyl group I am also going to need a bond to an OH on the more substituted carbon I'll make it carbon first and BR on the less substituted carbon notice I didn't talk about stereochemistry yet, and it's it's okay to just do all your bonds normal and then fix them later. Uh, this is an anti-stereoselectivity reaction. I need one of those bonds to be a wedge, and I need the other to be a dash. Notice I'm selecting the wedge tool, and I do not click until I see the both atoms highlighted in brown. And the dash tool, same story. I did not click until I saw both atoms highlighted in brown. If I only saw one atom, you will get a result you do not like. Like that. Do not like that. And I have achieved my result and I would submit my answer and get full credit here. Next example. In this example we're reacting an alkene with a strong acid generating a carbocation intermediate. Uh, some of you see this branch over here and start thinking about rearrangement. I would like to point out for a rearrangement to occur, you need a branch on an adjacent carbon to a carbocation. Here would be a carbocation on the more substituted carbon. The carbon to the left of it does not have a branch. There will be no rearrangement here. So I just want to draw the carbocation right here because that's the more stable one. We're going to be drawing the chloride ion in a separate window. It does not say to show all the uh, electrons, uh, so you do not have to put the lone pairs on the chloride ion. 
We're going to draw the chloride ion in a separate sketcher and there will be only one more stable carbocation so there's no need to separate carbocations. We're going to have five in a row with an ethyl off of the second last one or you can think of a methyl off of the third last one. Regardless, let's draw what we have. Got ethyl up here and five in a row, four, five, and the cation right here, make sure you have the cation in this menu, is on the second last carbon. Verify by counting carbons, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Ethyl off of there. There's your cation. I need another window. And unfortunately, I, I picked an example where we're supposed to draw resonance forms. This is a flaw of my choice, choosing question 13 from chapter 22. I'll fix that in a second. I switched over to question 28 from chapter 22 and redid my work. It is time to add my chloride ion, counter ion. I need a new doodler. And let me have it so we can see it. Here I just need to put a CL on the dot and make sure I have the anion charge for it. Notice it filled in the octet until I fixed it with the charge. We're not asked for lone pairs. If I was asked for lone pairs, I would go here, grab lone pairs, I'd hit it once on the CL, twice on the CL, three times on the CL, four times on the CL, and this is the product if lone pairs are asked for. They were not asked for. This is the answer. Next problem. In this example, they've given us a mechanism for a step of a reaction we may or may not have seen before. It doesn't matter. They want us to draw the result. So in this one I have how many carbons in a row? One, two, three, four, five, six in a row. Two, three, four, five, six. Off the third last one I have an ethyl. And there's going to be a new bond to an O here. There's going to be stereochemistry so there's going to be an old bond to an H here. The O here has a bond to CH2, CH3, as well as H. Editing all those atom labels, I need this to be an O. I need these two things to be H's. If it's a stereo center and they ask you to show stereochemistry, you need wedge and dash. And yes, if there's an H, I need to see that H. Wedge and dash. The oxygen had two lone pairs and it used one to make a bond. It still has one. Don't click until you see the O. Now the oxygen also has a plus charge. Plus charges are with lone pairs. And this is one of my products. And the nice thing about this newer OWL is we can copy everything here and add it to the new one and edit it from there to save time. Hit the paste button over here. Change the wedge and the dash. That will be the other enantiomer. And there are your two products with all the stipulations that they gave over here. And I would hit submit. And our final example. In this example, they're looking for the intermediate in the bromination of this alkene, carbon tetrachloride and dichloromethane. This being dichloromethane are both solvents that are commonly used during these reactions. They chose carbon tetrachloride. Please do not use this to make any decisions. This is a solvent. We're going to draw the cyclic bromonium ion over here. Uh, the longest chain has one of the methyls as part of the chain. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the other methyl here, eight. We need eight. I'll go four on the right. One, two, three, four. That gives us five. And three more. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I have cut off my question a little bit here. And we need to draw off of the fourth carbon a triangle. One, two, three, four, triangle. Make sure, let's do that again. It's lower. First bond is easy. Second bond, you got to start on the circle and don't let go until you see a circle on the CH3. Boom. And now I have to change the corner to a bromine. Uh, it doesn't say anything about lone pairs. And all I have to do is add my charge. And make sure we've read the question. We did not have to do wedges and dashes with stereochemistry. We didn't have to show any H atoms, which would also be for stereochemistry. We do not have to show the bromide ion. And we are done. And I hope you found this video on ChemDoodle useful. And I look forward to our next video.